Hi so guys. That's the best we can do. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, do you want to start again? <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Okay. All right. All right, guys. We just thought we'd um, upload a response to the very sincere lady who is in Massachusetts, Patty, whatever her name is, that is being uh, interviewed on blog radio and sharing her understanding of the seven planetary system that is uh, headed our way. Um, that's the point. It's her understanding of the data. However, as Yah has, uh, in his cool, calm manner, pointed out, she is wrong. What we are aiming for, of course, is all of the elite to go underground. We want them to. That's all part of the prophecy. They will hide themselves in caves and underground. And when they do, as we've been warning them for years, yeah, I've been warning them. Mashing up teeth. Mm, as they will realize it will be no escape for them and they'll end up as powder. All good. So, can you please explain All right, why yeah. it is people should not panic? There's very little understanding of what's actually happening out there in the Milky Way galaxy, and that is that the solar system has crossed into the northern hemisphere of the Milky Way galaxy. Um, the Coriolis effect, or the spinning momentum, if you like, of uh, the Earth encountering the opposite effect of the Coriolis of the Milky Way galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy dominates. That's why our weather has been so topsy-turvy in the last uh, five years or so. And once we crossed over, we found that people living in the Northern Hemisphere, the simplest test of all was to drain water down a, out of a sink and it would turn in the opposite direction, which was clockwise for people living in the Northern Hemisphere, is now counterclockwise. And people living in the Southern Hemisphere, is now clockwise. Now, we uh, travelled through 11 countries and uh, observed the uh, sunrise and sunset being very unusual and finally tracked it down to Herne Bay, which is about 25-30 uh, miles north of uh, the south coast of England near Dover. So what we found was that uh, when we went to Herne Bay, Probably within 10 miles or 15 kilometers of that point on the coast, on the north coast of this little outcrop of the UK, you would have to see what that point. Um, that was at the center of the new axis of the Earth. For those living in the northern hemisphere, all you have to do is look out and see where the North Star should be and isn't. It's now 50 degrees out, meaning that the, the Earth has tilted over on its side, and it's the axis. There's two different things that they're talking about here. The axis of the Earth, which they don't talk about to a great extent. If you do, they, they soon knock it off the YouTube. But the other one is the shifting of the magnetic field. Now, that, that has been carrying on like that for a while, and... Uh, the odd weather situation that you see now is because of the North Pole is now centered over the lower part of the United Kingdom. And the South Pole is now uh, not in Antarctica, where it was, it is now near New Zealand. It's about 942 miles off the coast of New Zealand. So, New Zealand is experiencing very, very cold weather. And so the southern Brazil and Brazil Philippines and all these places have snow, have snow <laughs> uh, in tropical areas. And that's just because it is the same as of uh, moving all the continents 50 degrees out of position. Now, will it stay that way? Well, it's very unlikely that it will. What happens is, is that the Antarctica is a huge mass of uh, floating ice. Um, and uh, if you were to melt all the ice there, which is not going to happen because it's just as cold there today as it was before, 
except it's now spreading, maybe even larger, uh, forming its uh, um, area, like the Ross Shelf, for example, which uh, year would grow by several hundred miles and then shrink by several hundred miles when it became uh, summer in the southern hemisphere. So now, of course, it's the, the coldest time of year for Antarctica. The sunlight is, should not be seen down there, but it is. That's indicating that the um, Antarctica has also shifted 50 degrees. If it shifts 50 degrees in the northern hemisphere axis, then obviously there's 50 degrees shift in the southern hemisphere as well. And that's why it's over near New Zealand. And that is why you're getting sunrise and sunset in Antarctica, where it should be all dark during the month of July and August. So this is what's actually happening. Now, it's not going to melt. It's going to get heavier because the winter there is now extended out towards New Zealand. In the Northern Hemisphere, they're talking about that on the North Pole, it's forming a lake. Well, I've got news for you that the ice on the North Pole was once totally covered all year round. And what happens is that the Americans in their, one of their submarines, might have been the Nautilus, I think, it went to the center of the North Pole and then went up through the ice, because the ice was only several meters thick at that point, and they crashed through it, and there they're out running around on the ice of the North Pole with the center of the conning tower of the submarine stuck out through it, because it's in the middle of a sea. So what happens is that when the North Pole freezes over, it's all solid on top of the sea. There's no land mass under it. Look at your maps and see where the North Pole is. It's all a, a huge area of sea which is frozen over. So what we have is these large planets coming in. Now this lady is saying that one of the planets is four times bigger than Jupiter. Now if that was the case, it would mean that the dwarf sun that's accompanying it would have to be much larger to keep these seven planets in their orbits. Because compared to the largest planet in our solar system as it is, is Jupiter at 88,800 miles across, and there's a clue, creation, 8888. So what we have then is the sun is approximately 11 times wider, a little under that. But the mass is, is huge. So a sphere that's say 888,000 um, 88800 miles across, as opposed to the sun being 96, rather 864000 miles across, that's roughly nine to ten times bigger. But the mass is much, much higher. For example, the Earth, which is a fair size lump, uh, it's the largest of the solar planets, um, how many Earths would fit inside the sun? Well, it just happened to be 33,000. 333000, 333,000 Earths would fit inside the Sun to give you some idea of the mass of it. So, to say that there is a small dwarf out there with a planet, seven planets rotating around it. Now, these planets do have to stay in balance to a certain extent. And what happens is that a planet that is uh, four times wider than Jupiter, its mass would be 30 times more than Jupiter. So, four more. I haven't done the math on it, I don't even care about it because it's so stupid. But that's what it would be. So, what they're concerned about is that the debris that has been pulled along, and there's all sorts of speculation that uh, where does this debris come from? And uh, some say that it's uh, picked up the debris of the uh, one of the planets that was a direct hit by some other huge planet, that uh, Planet X or whatever they want to call it, there's all sorts of speculation out there, you can't keep up with the names of them, that they run into each other, and this is what caused the asteroid belt, a planet disintegrating. No, it wasn't. So, debris, of course, is being pulled along by large bodies. Now, we've had the tilt of the Earth occur, just like the moon has flipped upside down, but so is the Earth trying to flip upside down. As yet it hasn't happened. It has stabilized at 50 degrees now, off north. So we are having the severe weather problems. And with the 
three, this lady is talking about uh, planets that's going past the Earth. It's already past the Earth. So in other words, the magnetic effect on the Earth has already taken place. What they're talking about now is, and what where she's wrong, that is going to cause the Earth to flip upside down. If the bloody thing is already passed, it's the debris behind it that is impacting in Mars. Now, the atmosphere on Mars is almost zero. So, yes, if you were an, an amateur astronomer, and uh, you had, and there's thousands of them, in America in particular, uh, they'd be looking at Mars and they could see the impacts occurring. However, the Earth is larger. Its mass is four to five times more. It has an atmosphere, and getting through the atmosphere of, let's say, a um, one talent, which is speculated by the Bible, it's going to rain down, to hit the uh, atmosphere of being one talent, which is roughly 75 pounds, or say 30 kilos, 35 kilos, um, it's not that big. And hitting the atmosphere and getting into the burn situation, which is about 300 miles or 600 kilometers up, somewhere in that neighborhood, where it starts to encounter the other layers of air, uh, it gets hotter and hotter and it'll burn up. Very, very spectacular to see. For something to reach, reach the Earth's surface, it has to be huge. It might be, say, uh, 20 kilometres across. And that would then burn up as it's coming in, be reduced in size. It may, depending on what it's made of, if it's made of ice, well, it's certainly going to melt. So if it's iron, that's a little different. Uh, a lot of asteroids have come in, or meteors have come in out of iron. But coming in to uh, rain down on the Earth and cause this massive destruction that they're talking about in America, where they're going to end up in the inland sea, California's going to break up, and it's going to slide into the drink, and Florida is going to be washed with, uh, and Florida's not very high, by the way. This lady is talking about the Antarctica is melting, and then uh, all the water. Well, she, what she's saying is the 200 feet of Antarctica Plus the tsunami that will be caused um, by the, the the flip, the because she is also saying that the Earth will stop rotating and get to zero point, stop rotating, but the the waters will keep moving and that will cause this tsunami by the thousand feet high, plus the two hundred of the. Uh, well, to give you some idea, on the equator, the Earth is rotating at around one thousand three hundred. Uh, rather, 1,035 miles per hour. So kilometres, say 1,500, roughly 1,400 kilometres per hour. Suddenly it stops. Whoa. Come on. Give me a break. The mass of this thing is so, so huge that we sit on. And underneath us, we go down a 20, 30 kilometres. And you've got a molten mass. So it's not as if it's uh, one solid thing that's going to suddenly stop because there's been a huge break applied to it by this planet going past. It's a magnetic field. And the very worst it can have the effect on the Earth is to cause it to flip further. And it's slow. It's not something that's rapidly occurring. Now, we started to show dem and demonstrate with a, a movie of the moon flipping upside down in one hour on the uh, 11th of December 2011. It was actually 11, 11 a.m. that we saw it happen. So there's your number for everyone that's been seeing the number 1111. That synchronistic number comes up lots of times. First Kings 111, uh, talks about Solomon, the set your beast right there. Um, so the 1111 number is also my birthday. You know, in case I'm, uh, it's also Benedict. And 111th yeah. Pope. Yeah. Mm. 111th Pope. So, uh, it's a sacred number, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. If it was another number, I'd done that instead. So, now, 111 is a good number. One is Alpha, it's God, the Father, etc. So, all these monsters that have uh, been running the world. Before you go to the monsters that have running the world, address the magnetosphere of the Earth, how it will not collapse. Why? Well, see. Well, um, what she is saying is that the magnetosphere or the magnetic fields will collapse well, and allow. Well, that's right. She's also um, saying that uh, all the transformers are going to blow up and, and so forth. In America, people in Europe may not know this in Australia, but 
If you drive through America, they have their poles stuck up in the air. Because they have a, uh, a lower voltage, um, the house voltage is 110 volts. And uh, therefore, to, to get a feed into the house, um, they have adopted the idea of putting the transformers on poles. And quite often uh, in America, a transformer will blow up. And it's, it's quite common for a, a, a huge flash to occur. And it's, uh, when I say huge flash, it's something that might be blinding if you're close to it. But uh, if you're driving down the road 100, 100 yards away, 100 meters away, uh, it's no big deal. Uh, so this is quite common. So they have the um, transformers that feed the houses on top of the poles. Whereas in Europe and Australia and these places, England, they don't have the transformers. They have bigger transformers and they serve them in many cases underground. And, um, and then go up to one distribution point and then from there they'll have the wires go out which are small, cheaper, better way of doing it. Higher voltage, 415 volts between phases, where in America it's 220 volts between phases. And they bring 110 volts in. Usually they bring in a single phase, and they call it, it's actually two phases, the Americans got that one as well. They bring in two wires at the start point of the transformer, and uh, two wires coming in, they call that single phase. Well, there's only three wires coming off a transformer, and they're 120 degrees apart. So they bring two in, that's two phases. Now I've argued a point with electricians in America and Canada, and they still don't get it. I've drawn it out in pieces of paper, and they still don't get it. It's thick as too short, plain silver. <laughs> so, they bring in a single phase, it's not, it's two phase. Okay, so they've got 110 volts between the neutral point and the uh, one phase, and then the other phase, which is 120 degrees out on the transformer or on the rotation. What it is, it's a rotation of, of 360 degrees divided up into three parts of 120 degrees apart, is why you have a star point or a delta point on three positions on a transformer because it's been fed by the three phases coming in. So suddenly they've got a single phase out of that. It's really got me beaten. I thought about it for years. I thought, how can they work with such a ship? Anyhow, that's how it is. Now, wires that pass through a magnetic field set up what is called an EMF, and the EMF is, um, if it flashes on and off, it'll generate a surge of electricity. So if you have a lightning flash hit a tree near a transformer, a surge of high voltage will go through that and burn out the transformer. Fine. But we're talking about a, a planet going past that has a magnetic field and that somehow is going to cause every transformer on the planet to go haywire. Hello. What could happen? The only thing that could cause this kind of effect is a solar, a major solar flare from the sun. And one or two has happened in the past. Uh, those of you who are old enough to know when New York and the East Coast all went black for a certain period of time. It had a, a beneficial effect that nine months later, lots of babies were born mm -hmm. because it was dark. Everyone went home and said, right, our lady, we've got some bit of time here. And uh, that's what happened. The uh, population went up. So, yes, yeah, so the, this was caused by a solar flare. All right. So some of these huge transformers are affected by that. It's not going to happen. We're not going to have the same point, but these scientists that get on to the bandwagon of a man like Einstein, who is supposed to be the genius of all things, he's wrong on every point, which the only thing Einstein was right about, he went to a Catholic school and he read the Gospels when he's 32 years of age and he admired the Nazarene. So that tells you something. He's one of the men that has been highlighted as being one of the smartest men on earth, uh, is saying that the Gospels were not taught in the Catholic schools. Hello. That's going to change, isn't it? Now, they are very, very scared at the moment because um, Benedict has recognised me as being Christ. I don't care about everybody else. I was only after one man to recognise me, and that's the head of the church. Because the Catholic Church is the great whore, no doubt about it. And the Protestants are right. They, they have done some dreadful things and they are justified in breaking away from the church and making better. But when Christ comes back and he says, right, oh, I'm a Catholic, we're going to put all that together and the whole world's going to become Catholic, it's going to do another way. They, the Protestants, want the Catholic church not to have been to be because Christ's going to do it. I can't convince 36,000 different Protestant churches, but I can convince one Catholic. So, 
All these people, the evil ones, they go underground, and I've showed them before. If you go underground, you're dead meat because of what happened with the CIA tunnels. And this lady does mention that the the uh, tunnels underneath uh, and either side of the Mississippi, mm. they'll be crushed. And then what happens is you slam the door shut, the pressure builds up inside very, very slowly. And like being in a bathosphere when you get down 12,000 feet, which people do in these submarines, if you were to suddenly come up and then open the lid, the person inside blows up like a balloon into a million bits. So they have to decompress very, very slowly. And what happened with the CIA tunnels, with all the junk inside and all the secret equipment and all the people and they're safe, all of a sudden the doors blew out on simultaneously. There's two different CIA tunnels that, were not, that blew up within hours of one another. And everything in it was powderized because if you and I were sitting in there and we was up to 300 PSI, that's pounds per square inch, call it uh, 100 kilos per square inch. And suddenly the doors were open and we're back down to 14.5 pounds per square inch. So 7 pounds, 7 kilos per square inch roughly. Then you would pop and every cell in your body would just burst apart. That's what's going to happen to them. I told them, I told Obama. Obama, when he was going down to uh, go underground to have a look at the uh, Denver uh, nonsense, I said, you go on there, son, you're not coming in. I'll kill you, and they'll do it in such a way that they'll sacrifice you. In horrible ways. They'll sacrifice your kids before you rise, then your wife, and then you. Right? They'll have dreamed up things. Why do we know that? Well, they get a poor Satanist. This is how they, they make their living. This is what their God is. Causes all sorts of pain and suffering throughout the world. So they take the elite. You've done your job, son. Now get down here, we're going to do your thing too. We don't hear from you no more. And some of these uh, videos that this idiot has made, this is Obama, for two years in advance. Like, how dumb is that? Never make a video talking about something that's going to happen in two years' time because they could kill you and you're dead for two years before they use your video. This is what this idiot did. So, this is what we're dealing with. It's all bullshit. And uh, don't worry about it. Uh, don't go buying culverts and digging them into the ground. You haven't got time for what's going to happen anyhow. Uh, don't put your, your camper under the ground and put a, a, uh, a metre of uh, soil on top because that's a thousand, uh, well, five or six hundred kilos per square metre of loose soil. That's how much it weighs. Your little trailer would be crushed flat. And uh, it's what this lady is saying, all the good intention, she hasn't got a clue about the mechanics of what she's talking about. She has no idea of astronomy. Um, and so therefore, it's a lot of crap. However, the seven planets are real, aren't they? Oh, sure, the seven yeah, planets. But they're angels, right? That's where the angels dwell, right? They're all <laughs> coming down, taking over. Right? The luminaries from Enoch. I've just, I've just <laughs> written a letter to the Pope, and uh, uh, I've explained to him that uh, you can go anywhere in the world except Australia and uh, you'll find these magnificent uh, huge stones that weigh in tons, um, 1,300, 400 tons, that have been quarried, lifted, moved, shaped, put into walls. And this is the Baalbek, I think it's called in Syria. Um, that's just one of the locations. You go down to South America, Chitikaka, for example, they got stones up there weigh thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds or kilos. They've been moved to huge distances, placed together. Uh, there's a Tio I think it's called. Um, they've got uh, stones there that have come from 2,000 miles away, some huge distance. Uh, they've got uh, the Mexican um, huge pyramids that are based on pi, the base times uh, 4 pi gives you the height, or divided by 4 pi gives you the height. And they have a mica, one of the pyramids there has a mica slab in it. It's about in feet, 2 feet thick or 500 millimetres. It's about um, 70 metres square. Uh, it comes uh, 5,550 miles away, uh, kilometres away is your Christ number. From the middle of South America, that's the only place where this is found. So it's been levit cut out of the, the quarry lift it and if you know anything about mica you can squeeze it with your fingers and crush it all to bits so this has been lifted up 
taken 5,550 kilometres and placed on this pyramid, which are all aligned perfectly north, south, east and west on the former rotation of the Earth. It's all out now. And uh, who did it? Well, the aliens did it, didn't they? Yeah, From Planet X. Alien technology. And they're coming back. We can ask the Arkanakis about that when they get here. Well, I have one little thing to say about that. Bullshit. There's no life out in space. The only life out in space that's coming is the angels. The angels. Angels right? of God. And they have the, the life that we know it. Right? These are angels of God. Mm. Now, if you go to Easter Island or any of the other places where they talk about even the Great Pyramid, they talk about men who came there from the east, they descended, conquered, and then these men are described as being, and this is in China as well, there's a hundred or so pyramids over there, some of the biggest pyramids in the world, they're 1,400 foot square. Uh, the White Pyramid, I think it's called, is one of them. And these were all covered over by the Chinese and made terrorists to uh, make it look like they're growing plants because they didn't want the white people to find out from Europe that the men who came there they descended out of the sky from the east, like they did on Easter Island and Pyramid and everywhere else of Egypt, and built these magnificent structures and then left. Now, these men were seven feet tall, 300 pounds, or let's say 130, 140 kilos, uh, blue eyes, uh, white skin, full beard, Chinamen don't have beards, they had full beards, so red hair, all blonde hair, curly hair. That's just. <laughs> Yeah. There was one very good looking one that had silver hair, I believe, and blue eyes, and it wasn't quite as big as that. <laughs> we go down to Mexico, you get Kukukan, and he was a tall uh, man with uh, silver hair and silver beard, blue eyes, and uh, they have him carved in the side of their temples down there, and uh, they were taught by the angels, these big, huge men again, uh, animal husbandry, uh, medicine, and uh, how to. Uh, educate and astronomy and the Mayan calendar and the Mayan calendar is accurate to within 33 seconds and 500 million years for the orbit of the moon doesn't mean it's 500 million years old it means it's accurate if it kept on going it would be accurate in that dimension which an atomic clock today as uh, can can uh, verify couldn't could have done it 40 years ago even less so uh, all these uh, things have been put there by angels. Now the Bible talks about angels and everyone's saying oh, the, the word of God is the Bible. Has it mentioned angels or not? If it does, then it's the word of God. Now I'm saying to you that what happened is you got the word of God right, but it's not in what the actual words are because if you read Leviticus and the story of Moses who was talk, spoken to by God on a mountain in a burning bush, right, um, and then comes down with the Ten Commandments and gets pissed off. And then someone who is uh, picking up sticks on the Sabbath because he's cold or he wants to feed his family, they're going to take him outside the camp and stone him. That is not me. That is not God. Now, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And the Father and I are one. That is the Word of God. That's called the New Testament. The Torah is not anything to do with God. It is entirely manufactured. Right? They've taken bits of the Genesis story and manipulated to fit the chosen ones, which are now Mongolians out of bloody Mongolia that had invaded Khazaria and adopted Judaism in the 8th century. Right? These are not one of them. Not one of the Jews in Israel today are a true Jew. And even if they were a true Jew, they're not Essenes. <laughs> See, it's the Essenes that it's were the chosen ones. the Essenes are the chosen ones. And who were they? They're the Shemites. The Shemites are descended from Shem, not Mongolians. Right? They're the Goy. They reversed everything as what you know what the propaganda is. It's all bullshit. Right? My hero, and I'll say it again, was Hitler. If you read some of the things that Hitler said, it's Actually, I, I will. I'm going to make a separate upload. And, all right, and, well, uh, let's. let's I'll uh, give it away. Um, Let's just leave it there, mm. and uh, that light was quite good at the moment, I, I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry now, we've got John and Catherine down in Florida, 
Uh, heading, heading toward Florida. Right, driving down the coast. <laughs> driving down the coast from Maine. And uh, I can assure you, uh, they're not going to get swamped. Now, Florida, uh, the best part of it is uh, the, the swamps itself, the Everglades, and that's about three foot above sea level. So it takes a very small wave to wash right across Florida and see it in the lower part of Florida. Of the Everglades. I've been through there, I've been eaten alive by mosquitoes down there. I spent some time down there. I interviewed people that uh, uh, said that they've seen alien spaceships. Actually, when I was down there, I went to Shoreline Park, where all the aliens show up. They have this alien sighting every three days, or more. This has been going on for years. You talk to natives down there, and what it is, is the swamp gas coming up, or it's the uh, Gulf of Mexico giving off this uh, uh, gas that farts now and then. And spontaneously, it will even burn. And it's quite pretty to see. And you'll see a flash of light, and you'll see something like an eight fingered, like a, a, if you've got a gas cook stove, and you turn, it's got eight burners, for, for example, all the blue light. That's what it looks like. It's blue and a little bit of yellow, and it'll, it'll drift along, just like a UFO going along, all of a sudden, it'll go pop. And I, very often, a white, with my hand, a white that'll go like that, right? so it's burning away like that, you go pop, disappear, and then a white burning bit will fall down towards the earth and then maybe fall three or four hundred metres and then go in. And, and what about all of these other odd shapes that people have been seeing? They call them motherships and UFOs and, and all, all kinds of um, things that people have been seeing and reporting. And, well, I looked, and at, I looked at one which was quite interesting and it's a, a hot air balloon. You can see the frame of it and it's stretched over, filled with helium gas or something like that. And um, we have to be very careful about what the imagination of the human being will get into. Uh, in particular, in America, we're all familiar with that. So um, I wouldn't take too much um, on what an American tells you. And um, this not to mean that they're stupid. It means that they've been caused to be unable to think clearly because of the fluid. That's what it's all about. So they can put things in your head. And um, of course, you've been poisoned all these years. And um, you've got all these telecommunications uh, waves, waves, and, waves and, and all these things can be beamed into your head. And what you think you're seeing, you, you do see. Right? It's not really there. Right? I'll give an example of that. Um, if you talk about the evolutionary idea that we are billions of years old, the uh, NASA made a big mistake by training their. Uh, orbiting telescope, um, the Hubble, at one area uh, which is in this, uh, astrology would be uh, Pegasus. And Pegasus is the darkest area of space. In other words, there's the least amount of stars in it. And it's called the window of Pegasus. It opens every year at a certain time, around October. And that's where the, the myth of the white horse is going to come jumping through to this 500 foot Jesus sitting in the so um, that's not going to happen either. Now what they did, they trained their uh, cameras at this dark part, expecting to see the 15 billion light years away. Stars will start, or galaxies will start showing up as they can see after training the cameras on this area for weeks or whatever it was. And uh, when they got the results, what they seen is fully formed galaxies the same as the nearest galaxy, Andromeda. Therefore, all the galaxies, no matter how far away they are, are the same. Instead of seeing galaxies forming at the edge of the universe and the light traveling here 15 billion years, and you should see a little tiny newborn galaxy. Didn't happen. Why? In the creation, what you see with your eye and what is caught by cameras is caused for you to see that, to make you develop this astronomy crap and come up with ideas of that is what's out there. So when you really get to the point of being able to develop the space hub all and lovely machine it was, they put it up and if they were octopuses they'd be patting themselves on the back with this marvellous machine and when it gets up there it's blind as a bat because when they built the bloody mirror for it they didn't build it right. So then the Americans patting themselves on the back again, sent astronomers, uh, astronauts out there to do a moonwalk or whatever they do, not a moonwalk, spacewalk, 
and they put a lens on the thing, like a contact lens. Now, how dumb is that? If they're not smart enough to make a thing that'll work out in space, first go without going up with a, a billion dollar uh, machine to work out what the hell is wrong with it, and have to make then grind another lens for it to fit, which itself is quite an amazing event to be able to do that, to correct the balls up they made in the first place. Yet, they're patting themselves in the back ass Monday. Hasta la vista, baby. So, bottom line is, the huge expanse of, of the universe that everybody's in and wants to go out it's an illusion. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. You know what happens when you die? You don't go out in the galaxy. You go to somewhere else entirely different. You go through a white light. You're into a spiritual realm. And there's no stars. There's no Andronema. There's no this. There's no that. There's no no bloody space telescope, the Hubble. None no of that. No other life. Nothing. There's no aliens walking around with the antenna stuck in their head. Sorry. Man is made in God's image, you're looking at him, and that's what you're going to look like in a few years. So, very, very fortunate. <laughs> um, you get him younger, you aren't you? You look a lot like her as well. <laughs> anyway, guys, relax. And all you homosexuals, I'm sorry, you're not getting in. No. That's, what, that's, part, of the, that's part of the, uh, the test. If you're going to be homosexual, you're out of here. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Child molester, not getting in. That's why when I wrote Vatican III for the Pope, it says, none, no homosexuals, no child molesters. Anyone who is fought, found to be a child molester or whatever, immediately jailed. For life uh, until for death. For life until death. No release. No release. So, swift. The death would come pretty quickly, too. I think that. Mm. Swift justice. All right. When you walk into a Catholic church, you're walking into a sanctuary that represents me and it is going to be as if I was there looking at you. And you will guarantee that I will tell you the truth, the church will tell you the truth. I will help you in every way I possibly can, the church will help you in every way I possibly can. And the man on top will be the Pope. And that Pope is a man I chose. Because he's my brother. And that's why it's he's Simon Cowell, reincarnated. He's <laughs> my brother. And don't go quoting me Bible now. Oh, he's not your brother. He's Simon's brother. He's someone else's brother. He's just Andrew's brother. Sorry. I will correct the Bible and I'll tell you what's in it and what shouldn't be in it. And we'll have we'll keep the Bible, the King James Bible in particular. We'll keep that because it's full of numbers. Right? But then we'll have another book that goes with it. And you look up, say, Ezekiel's wheels or look up something else, sacrificing uh, someone, uh, a bull. Right? And I'll have, see... Little red dot, follow that down and say, Bullshit! <laughs> should be, should, should be swelly, fairly swift editing, shouldn't it? Just BS. That's all you need. BS, 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 BS. Mm. Anyway. So, right. guys, have fun. It's um, what we've all been looking forward to. It's the cleansing. Yeah. And uh, it's my birthday coming up on the 19th. And it's my birthday, birthday present. It's my asked birthday. Me. I ask, you know, done and dusted all evil off. Before my birthday, so. It's all good. The 19th. That's your sister, babe. Oh. And you know it. Sister. All right, later, Gators. <laughs>